us anyway. But uh, we're glad that you're here regardless. And I pray that you're blessed. I was talking to the folks here inside the uh, congregation that there's a letter that I send out every December at the beginning trying to encourage people to stay a Christian during the holidays. And uh, I'm very fortunate. I know <clears throat> I was, I'm speaking on your behalf as well because I think you're very fortunate. We grew up in Christian families. And so when I married into your family, I married into a Christian family who, you know, knows the reason for the season, which is Jesus Christ. So we didn't have a lot of these difficulties that we hear about, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the ones that, uh, you know, you hear of people who, and, and maybe this is the case for you, you know, you're getting together and you got to go to this relative's house. And you go to this relative's <laughs> house and you're like, oh my goodness, I just, I really don't want to be there, but it's Christmas and I have to go. Or you're going home and you got to be there with your uh, heathen sibling, right? And, and it's like, oh, great, you know, and then here we are going to be trying to celebrate Christmas and they're going to be pouring extra booze in the eggnog. And, uh, you know, and here we are, you know, we're going to have a hap, hap, happiest Christmas. Don't know. <laughs> Um, but, you know, and, and maybe that's not the case for you. Maybe it's really a struggle. And so we don't understand that from experience, just from watching some folks. I think I, I get, and I, I, hmm, let's start over. Um, I think I come across as being really irritated with the American church, but I am really irritated. <laughs> oh, that's why you come across church. that way, because it's true. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm so frustrated with, the church, the corporate church as a whole right now, because I think that, man, we are just, not, not us necessarily, but we are failing on so many levels of true Christianity. Um, the, uh, Kevin, is Kevin Schmansky in here? My son-in-law sent me a video um, yeah, a couple days ago of a church, you know, in our area that their Christmas production is like everything but Jesus. It was... It was labeled as encouraging and uplifting, and even during the the introduction of how they were, um, I, 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 yeah, his Jesus was never even mentioned in the commercial, and it, the commercial, it was yeah, just like yeah. my brain cannot comprehend how we've gotten so far away from what we've stood for, what the Christians are supposed to, you know, really stand for, and I'm I'm bugged because. I know our lives get busy. All of our lives get busy. And I feel like the closer we get to the return of Christ, the busier it gets. Although it shouldn't because we have more time than they did 100 years ago. Like, we have washing machines. <laughs> I, I don't have to go milk the cow. Thank you, Jesus. I just go to the grocery So we have more time than they did 100 we apologize years ago. to those of you joining us from Nigeria and Liberia. Um, <laughs> Right, I'm so Seems sorry. To be you, but but, it, you know, but it's, I'm talking about American churches, <laughs> not not the churches in Nigeria, because I think you guys probably do it better than we do. But we're all busy, and it saddens me that the thing that goes is Jesus and church. Yeah. We've got to fit everything else into our busy schedule, but church is secondary. When we have time when we have time or if it fits or there'll always be next Sunday. So I'll go next Sunday. And man, I just, when Jesus created the church and I know we're the church, but you can go all through scriptures. I'm sorry, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians were was speaking to churches, not just people. It was talking to bodies Corporate, of, yeah. Christ, of Christ who came together mm -hmm. corporately. So, yeah. you know, I get it. We're the church, but man, how did we get so far from what he originally created? You know, he saw the necessity for us to get together more. In fact, what does he say? The closer we get to the return of Christ, the more you better get together because yeah. people are going to fall away quickly. They're going to they're gonna make bad decisions. They're going to be deceived. They're going to find other things that draw their attention. And we're seeing that happen. And really, for Christians, this is our time to make a stand, to look different. You know what? People are going to find you really odd for coming to church. Christians are going to find you odd for coming to church on Sunday morning. I have had Christians shocked, not from our church, from other churches questioning me, do you really think anybody's going to show up on Christmas morning? No, and I yeah. laugh because I think I think they've heard enough from us <laughs> that they'd be a little we're afraid a to church. not come. <laughs> Sorry for those of you who are joining us that maybe you're not from a real one, but we're a real church and we teach the real tr truth. And, you know, the This is God more important is, than yeah, partying with our, our loved ones. I mean, I hate to say it, but let's be really <laughs> honest, right? 
Yeah. So it's funny, the holidays for us, we've never had, both of our families have been saved. And so I've not had the pull from the world saying that something is more important. Church was always a priority in our family's life. I know for your family's yeah. life as well. But I think that it's something that if you've not been raised with that, you're going to have to make some hard decisions. And the quicker you make them, the easier it's going to be. Like the longer you prolong this, the harder it's going to be to sure. make Jesus number one. Well, and, and I think just before we get into this, you know, for many folks, if they look at you or they look at a lot of people, a lot of people who call themselves Christians and they don't really see any real difference. Yeah. If they, if they look and they say, this person's sick all the time, so are you. This person's depressed all the time, so are you. This person's, you know, having problems over here, so are you. This per well, then glory, hallelujah, I'm a Christian too. But what do I really need to do? I don't need to, there's no real change. I think people are hungry for something that they know works. And they're looking for, they're looking Truth. at us Christians. I know a lot of people say, oh, they're looking at us Christians waiting for us to fall. No, that's part of it because... Some people are waiting for a Christian to fall so they can justify their bad behavior. But there's a lot of sincere people out there that are saying, show me how it works. Show me why you have yep, that peace. I agree. I really want to pay attention. And here's the thing. You know, <clears throat> you don't drown by falling in the water. You drown by staying there. So get out. People are looking at us as Christians, and they're wanting to see us fall because they want to see... How do you get back up? How do you go on with life? I really think it's a testament. Two weeks ago tonight, in just a few hours, we're two weeks away, my father-in-law passed away. And um, would have been, it, it, I, I, I don't want to make light of it. Don't misunderstand me. Um, it was hurtful, it, meaning, you know, we were not prepared for that. You know, it wasn't something that, you know, it was just a, it was an expectation. It was like, what, what do you mean? He's... He's dying. What do you mean we have to run to the hospital? Like, this was just so, like, he was fine today. He was, but it's a testament, I say, it's a testament to my wife and her strong faith that, and I, we appreciate, don't, I, I, we appreciate the prayers of the saints. We believe that that has given a peace that passes understanding. But I look around and I see some people who are so devastated by things that have happened in their life. And, and I used to say to myself, man, what do people do without Jesus Christ? Well, we had the, the opportunity here at our church a couple times. We hosted a, I forget the name of the group, but it was a basically a grieving group. They even had it on TV. Um, we, we had Channel 4 was out here, and they did this whole thing, people uh, unsolved crimes and stuff like that. And I saw firsthand how some people, uh, their son had been killed or something tragic had happened to a family member. And here they are five, ten years later, their life has not gone on. It's caused divorce. It's caused all kinds of stuff. There's been bankruptcies. There's been all kinds of, of hurt and pain. And, you know, so you wonder, man, how does the world, world how does people without Christ go, without, go through these things? Well, that's how. They're now on drugs. They're now on the very drugs that killed their son because their son was, got killed, and now they're so depressed, they're on that. And, and, and now, all of a sudden, you start to see families split, fall apart, fall into depression, and it just goes on and on, and it's cyclical. And it's like you've got other kids, and now you're destroying your life even for the kids that are, that are left behind. That's what happens in reality in the world. Yeah. I'm not saying, what, what am I saying? Everyone's going to die. We're all going to have loved ones who pass away at some point in time in our life. But God, you know, God can get you through these difficult times, and it's important for the world to see that in us. And for those who think, oh, Christians just put on a happy, happy face, and you don't know. You don't know when you have the greater one living on the inside of you. If you're sitting at home and you're not a Christian, you don't know Jesus is your personal Lord and Savior, I'm here to tell you that he changes your life completely and gives you a peace. The Bible is true when it says he gives a peace that passes understanding. You won't even understand. I remember when my father died, August uh, of 2017, how... Uh, there was a peace that came. Oh, I was sad, but there was a peace, a, a tangible peace where I looked and thought to myself, I'm okay, and I feel weird. I almost feel like bad that I'm not mourning more because I should be mourning more. And actually, I kind of got upset with myself a little bit, like, 
Like, aren't you caring? But you know what I realized? This is that peace that passes understanding. There's people that are praying and lifting me up right now, and I can feel it. And I'm able to get through this without, without suffering th the pain, the, the, the horrible sting of death. I was able to spend more time rejoicing that my father was in heaven. And so I wanted to share with you t tonight, and uh, Pastor Kerry's going to help me here, how to survive the holidays as a Christian. <laughs> survive. <laughs> and for some of you, that's the case, right? I talked about on Sunday how a lot of times in our Western culture we get so wrapped up in materialism and Christmas is all about stuff, 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 right? You know, what can I get, what can I get, and what can I give, and how much money do I have, and pension pennies, and, you know, uh, for some folks, you know, it's like they're squeaking every last penny they can, out, even out of their credit card, to just try and make things look really, really great, and they're missing the whole point. And so there's a, four points that I want to give you on how to survive the holidays as a Christmas. Uh, now, as a Christian. As a Christian. We're not Christmas. And there may be more than four points, but this is my teaching, so it's, there's four. Um, number, number one, number one, and I encourage you to do this. Obviously, for those of you that are here, you're already doing number one, and that is to come to church uh, whenever there's a service. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10, 25. If you can, throw that up there behind me. Hebrews 10, 25, because this is extremely important with all the materialism, all the filth, all the <coughs> junk that's on TV, all the, the pulls that you get in different directions. It's real easy to get lazy and slide off uh, during Christmas. But you know what? The devil never takes a holiday, never takes a vacation. So, you know, many of you, you're, you're on vacation. Some of you are on vacation right now. Some of you are on vacation next week. You're getting some much deserved time off, and I pray that you use it well and spend it with family and Rest, recuperate, rejuvenate. But Hebrews 10.25, New American Standard, says it this way. Don't forsake our own assembling together, which is what we're doing, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. We've, we, have, we have dissected this verse every which way this past year, um, as is the habit. You know, we decided, you know, we were talking what constitutes a habit, you know. <clears throat> Obviously, you, you're doing this over and over again. So there's, why am I saying that? I know some folks are going to miss this Sunday because they're with family or they're going out of town and everything. This message isn't for you. I'm not saying, you know, oh my gosh, you missed one Sunday, you're going to die and go to hell now. Uh, no, <laughs> but what I am saying is one of the ways to survive is to make yourself available. Readjust your schedule so that when the church doors are open, you're there, especially during the, the holidays. Amen? Go ahead. I'm going to skip down to number four first, and I'll okay, go back to number right. two. Yep, do whatever um, order you want. The number four, he, he has, be a light for God at work and during Christmas parties. And Matthew 5, 16, can I get you to throw that up there? I know we, I skipped the order, so I apologize. Matthew 5, verse 16 says, Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Shortly after my, my dad had passed away, I was talking to Dawn Harvey. She's not in here, is she? No. So Dawn was telling me that she, for many of you that don't know, she works in hospice. And she said, it's really strange, Pastor Carrie, but more people pass away around Christmas time than any other time. And I thought, well, that's an interesting statistic. You know, like, why would that be? So, uh, you know, I go home and I think about these things. And I was like, hmm, how interesting. And then I started to think about Christmas. And I think about seasonal depression. I think about holiday depression. I think about the sadness that surrounds the holidays, not just Christmas, but Easter and and finances, I know it's, it's hard on people, it's hard on families, and so there's a lot of um, contention in homes and strife, and, and I started to kind of break it apart, like, why is this? And of course, Satan would love to distract and cause Christians to, to look inward instead of outward, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm certainly not saying that the devil took my dad. I believe the Bible says the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I do believe that. I do believe that because of Adam's sin, death is why is here. It's why we experience death, right? So Satan had something to do with it. God gave permission, and I'm okay with that. Um, ultimately, but ultimately, but I'm thinking at Christmas time, and you know, there was a time in in during the last couple of weeks that, and it's been rough. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. My mom has has struggled probably more than I thought she would, but there was a moment where I could have gone one way or the other, and. Mm -hmm. And every one of you have been to that crossroads in your life where you know I could allow myself to go down the road of complete depression and mm -hmm. sadness and 
you know, total mourning, or I could make the right turn, and I just don't mean that. <laughs> I could make the other turn and decide that I'm going to choose peace, as hard as that can be. And I remember that very distinct moment of, of realizing how deep I was going <laughs> and how quickly I needed to turn that around. And I think for us as Christians, every one of us yeah. need to make that decision right now. Satan, you're not going to steal this Christmas. And I don't mean because I want the, you know, the Christmas turkey or the presents, but I'm going to bring God the greatest, highest praise that I can possibly give him. It doesn't matter what my situation looks like. It doesn't matter what I'm battling. He is going to get glory and honor because the whole reason we celebrate Christmas is because of him. And so I think what we've really got to do is make that decision to say, I'm going to put aside whatever's going on in my life so that Satan doesn't distract me mm -hmm. from honoring God during this Christmas season. Yeah. I, Christians, we've got to get past this seasonal depression. Yeah. Like, that's just Satan. It's just Satan that does not want you to enjoy Jesus' birth. He doesn't want you to celebrate it. So you've got to decide, and it's a decision. I know some of you are like, no, Pastor Kerry, you don't understand. No, I do. I get it. We can go one way or the other. It is a choice yeah. for every single one of us. It is a choice. In fact, I posted um, today on the, the girl band about Luke 21, and it talks about carousing and drunkenness. And then in the same sentence, it talks about worrying. Both of them have the potential to deceive you. The, just the two. Yeah. And so, man, it, you know, we talk about the drunks and we talk about how bad it is to drink, but it's just as bad for you to worry, not because of the worry itself, but what worry brings. It distracts you and it keeps you bound. It keeps you under. It keeps you dis depressed. And, man, you're going to have to make this decision that I'm going to be a light for Jesus during this, for some, very dark holiday. Yeah. And, man, what a, an opportunity to, to bring light I, uh, you all joke about Hallmark, or uh, not Hallmark, Valentine's Day. And so many people are like, that's just a Hallmark holiday. Or a uh, Sweetest Day. It's just a, holi a Hallmark holiday. Well, shame on you. If it's an opportunity to show love to your spouse a little more than you already do, then you should be excited about doing it. And it's the same way with Christmas. It's the same way with, like, yes, we know presents. Jesus. I want, want more, more presents. presents. Oh, no. no yes. Saying. No. Um, I, but I don't like when men... Say, it's just a Hallmark holiday. Well, if it's an opportunity for you to show extra love I to your wife, you no. should do it. I used to say that. Anyways, that's my, I know all you wives are looking at your husbands, right? Look, wives, look, look deep in their eyes. They heard it from their pastor. Anyways, um, but Christmas, I get it. Jesus was born in April, but it's an opportunity for us to point yeah. all direction to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Like, shouldn't we take that as an opportunity? Yeah. and actually do it. And so what that's going to mean is we've got to take everything that's going on on the inside of us and shelf it so that he gets all of our attention. He gets our kids' attention. He gets, he gets the people's attention at work. He gets our family's attention. He gets all the glory in that it's not about us. It's not about yeah. what's going on in my life. It's about him. If he didn't come as a baby, mm -hmm. if he was never, ever born, every one of us would be destined for hell yeah. with no opportunity for anything else. Man, it is a gift that Jesus came. Yeah. You know, uh, in, in being the light, I, I want you to think of it this way. As Christians, again, you're supposed to, we just read from uh, Matthew 5, 16. If you're supposed to be a light in the world, but you're constantly dealing with depression, okay? Or, now, I'm not saying that you don't have a natural reason to be depressed. I mean... We live in I'm this sure world. I'm sure we could always, you know, all of us. <laughs> it's you know, a and and I know depressed. that there's some people who say, yeah, but mine is clinical. You know, you don't understand, blah, blah, blah. I, I just want you to understand this. When Jesus, the greater one, lives on the inside of you and you're constantly needing to be lifted up, who are you there for to lift up? You can't help anybody else if you're constantly having to be helped. And I, I, I'm just saying that Jesus Christ the Savior of the world lives on the inside of you. And brings everything yeah. that he I, is you, with him. Yeah, <laughs> and you may have some hurt, and I don't want to minimize mm -hmm. some people's hurt, but, you know, you can't keep the Son of God down in that pit with you forever. Eventually, you're going to have to rely on him to get out. Why? Because God's relying on you to minister to the yeah. people that are around yeah. you. Yeah. There's people around you that don't know Christ that are in a pit, and they, 
They belong there. They're supposed to be there because they, they don't know no Jesus Christ. But you're supposed to give that to them so that they can get out, right? And so I, I, we really want to encourage you dur during uh, this Christmas season, you're going to get up. together with, you know, folks here maybe this weekend, you know, you know Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, whatever, the, you know, you get with your family. You be the light. If there should be a light in that uh, room, it should be you because yes. you know Jesus Christ. So be a big mouth for, for Jesus. Amen? You know, I would rather as a Christian be kicked to the curb by my family because I just talk about Jesus too much than kicked to the curb by my family because I'm drunk all the time or I'm messing up the party or I'm doing something stupid. So that's a, that's the uh, second thing. You know, number one, be in church. Number two, be a light. Number three, uh, make sure that you keep your money right during the holidays. I know a lot of people like to cheat God out of the holidays. Um, and say, well, I'm not going to have enough money for my Christmas presents, so therefore I'm going to cut. I want you to just think about this for a moment, okay? Whose birthday are we celebrating? <laughs> I, sorry, Jesus, I couldn't get you a present for Christmas. I couldn't bring my gift to you. Your birth by giving money else, <laughs> you know? I, I'm just I'm just saying, um, if you want God's protection and you need it, you know. Matter of fact, uh, go ahead, and turn with me to Malachi chapter three. I'm going to read verses eight through eleven. You can't afford not to honor God with your tithing, and uh, because we are in, we're entering a season with the highest amount of drunk driving deaths and accidents. Uh, adds to that snow-covered roads, and uh, we need His protection uh, in honoring God with the tithe provides for that. Um, and so this is what it says. Will a man rob God, yet you are robbing me? But you say, how have we robbed you in tithes and offerings? That's two separate things, tithes and offerings. I'll talk about that in a minute. You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. This is God talking. Verse 10, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. The storehouse will be, this is the church. This is where you're getting your spiritual nourishment. So that there may be food in my house and test me now in this. Test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. In verse 11, so you're, you're getting a blessing, an overflowing blessing by honoring God. And then the number 11, it says, Then I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of your ground, nor will your vine in the fields cast its grapes, says the Lord of hosts. So I'm going to protect you from the devourer wrecking things and messing things up for you, but I'm also going to bless you so that you can afford new things. And, and I'm going to bless you in such a way that if you will honor me uh, with that, and, and a lot of times, when does this happen the most? A lot of times people do the most dishonoring with this. Mm -hmm. During the holidays. During the holidays because their money is stretched so thin in other places. And I'm just saying, put God first. Put God first in every area of your life, right? Uh, but as I'm going down and checking off these, this is one that you need to honor as well. Um, I mentioned tithes and offerings. They're two different things. The tithe belongs to God. The offering is up to you. The offering is up to you, and it's up to you to decide that. Uh, and it's up to you to get with God on the amount that he's laying on your heart. But the tithe already belongs to God. I'll make it real simple for you. You, you made $1,000. 100 of it already belongs to God. And uh, so there's no math in that, really. I mean, it's, there is, but there's not. Uh, you, you don't have to sit there and figure it out. A lot of people will say, and I, again, I'm just, for some of you, $1,000 is a lot of money. For some of you, $1,000 is much. I'm just doing it because it's simple math, not to, you know. Not, so $100 is, is tithe on $1,000. Someone says, I can only afford to tithe $20. No, you didn't tithe. The tithe is still the $100. You gave up $20, but you did not tithe. The tithe already belongs. The hundred dollars already belongs to God. You giving it back to him is just the sign of you showing faith. That's you doing what it says right there. So when people rob God and say, well, I gave 20, but my tithe was 100, well, you robbed him 80. And I just don't ever want to be in that. Now, a lot of people will get into the whole, will you tithe on the net or the gross? You know what? Let that be between you and God. But I will say this. I'm going to make sure that God gets the first cut before the government or anybody else does. And that's just my opinion. That's my belief on that. He's first place in my life, and I'm not going to mess up my money with God because I need his involvement in my life. Yes, He's amen. blessed us. He's blessed us. 
not just through the church, but th I mean through every which way that you could possibly think of. We are a, a testimony, and I know many of you are as well. I'm not trying to brag. I'm not bragging on ourselves. I'm bragging on God. I'm saying that we're a testimony to see that money has come to us from such strange crazy, places. strange ways. And, and, and I'm not trying to say that, well, listen, I'm really good with investments and da-da-da-da. No, 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 no. I honor God, and I don't mess with his money. It's not mine. It's his. I'm not messing with it. And so I would say to you this. You want your family to be blessed. I get it. You want them to have good things. I get it. You want them to have good presents. I get that. But you also want them to be blessed beyond December 25th. Isn't that the truth? And you want them to be blessed well into next year and on and on and on. Get God on your side and on their side by honoring him with that. If I can jump in and say this. So I believe this in every marriage, that there's usually one who's really good at tithing and one who's not. <laughs> You can probably figure out who's not. So I'm so thankful that I have a husband who, who would not bend on this. And so early on, you know, <laughs> early on, he would make sure we tithed even when I didn't think we should be tithing. And so in your, in your marriages, you need to figure out which one of you are better with the tithing. Who is the one who's not going to bend? And whoever is, you need to be really strong in this because I'll tell you what, I believe with my whole heart, the only reason we have been blessed is because you've been faithful in tithing. If it was up to me, we would have a whole lot of fun. but Temporarily. <laughs> but we probably wouldn't have a home. So um, it's important. But I think that God does it that way for a reason. And so rely on the person who is stronger. And I know that the battle is, you know, well, we got to pay bills or we got to do this or we got, well, man, if you could just get this through your head, how important tithing really mm -hmm. is. Not because Faith Christian Center needs your money. You know, I'll tell you what, God will take care of this church with or without you. Amen. He's proved that Amen. over and over and over again. Yeah. It, it, like Pastor Maurice would say, ain't, ain't one monkey stop, no show. So <laughs> just pra praise God for that. But, you know, and, and Pastor Maurice is a testimony to this mm -hmm. as well. Now, this is radical Christianity. I'm about to jump over Christianity 101 and just jump right to 401, okay? <clears throat> I, I, had to, I got to a place where, and this was my, my belief, I got to a place where, and some people would say, yeah, but I'm, my electric's going to get shut off. I, I personally got to a place, well, I'm not robbing God. Let my electric be shut off. People have made it for thousands of years without electricity. <laughs> Thank you, I'll Jesus, make it for too. not shutting off our electricity. Yeah, yeah. And so... Well, your water's going to get shut off. We got water. We can go down the street. We can get water, you know. And I, <laughs> I, my point is this. I'm not robbing God. My finances, are, I'm not stealing from him first. That already belongs to him. I'm not taking that. And once I got through that, God honored his word. He opened the windows of heaven and began pouring out a blessing until it overflowed. And so we're, we're grateful for that because God takes care of us in just miraculous ways. Yes, he does. You know, and, um, you know, I, <laughs> I mean, people who I haven't even seen for a long period of time, <laughs> you, you know, don't go to church, have nothing to do with Faith Christian Center. <laughs> Here's $1,000. Okay. Thank you. You know, I mean, just like crazy stuff, you know, that oh, I guess I would say, the world would call crazy, but we look at it and we've just come to go, <laughs> thank you, God. You know, whatever. It's not crazy anymore to us. Yeah. And so, you know, praise God for that. Go ahead. The fourth one mm -hmm. um, you have here. The bring fourth your, one on yours because you changed my I know order. I changed it. Bring, yeah. your, bring your busy relatives to church with you. Do not be led by family members who don't care about serving God or going to church. You are the leader in your home. Stand with your ancient forefather Joshua and declare, Choose this day whom you will serve, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24, 15. Let them stay home if they want, but you set the example of what is a priority in your house. You are the light of the world, Jesus said, so shine. Which kind of goes hand in hand with being a light at work. It's being a light in your home. And I know we're going to have a lot of relatives and, and things over. There's been times in our history, not everybody who is attached to our family mm -hmm. has been born again our immediate family and, and our brothers and sisters thank the lord are, are born again but there would be family members that would come to the house that would not and often and i'm sure this is the case for some of you they would bring things to our home um, that they wanted to use while they were at our church 
or at home. consume. I mean, we're at our home or consume or whatever else. And I'll tell you what, man, when you make your house a sanctuary, this is a holy home. We're not allowing junk in our house. We're not allowing certain things and we take a stand. It, you're going to shine whether you realize it or want to or not. Now, they may not like the light, but you're going to shine. But I think as Christians that mm -hmm. we should be taking that taking the leadership of yes. Christianity a yes. whole lot more serious than we are. You know, as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. You can do whatever you want in your house, but in my house, this is how we this is how we work. We do go to church on Sundays. So yes, we'll have thanks Thanksgiving. We'll have Christmas dinner later, but we're gonna go to church first. And it's just what we do. And it's not because we're pastors. And I think that might be Mm -hmm. The hang up for some, well, of course they have to be there. They're the pastors. I'll tell you what, if we weren't pastoring, we would still yeah. be in church. Before we started pastoring, we were, we were in still church. in church. Because, you know, church has fallen on Sundays for a lot of years. So before we were pastoring, we would be in church. Why? It's a priority. Jesus, my, I love my family. I love my immediate family. I love my nieces and nephews. Not more than him. Not more than Jesus. So we've always made that a priority. You can come over. In fact, I'll leave, give you the key to my, or the code to my, my garage. I'll let you in, but I won't be there because I'm going to be at church. So I'll see you in a minute. Sure. But this is what we do. And I think, man, if we would just take this stand as Christians, you know, even you, you're young people. I know some of you are like, well, it's not my house. Okay. So maybe go to your mom and dad and ask for permission. Would it be okay that I go to church first? Can I go to church? And then I'll be over at the house and we'll celebrate. And, but Take that stand yeah. so that your family knows who you love more than anything else. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things that my, we can kind of end with this, at my dad's funeral, I don't know how many times people would say, my dad loved two things. He loved his family, but more than his family, he loved God. And it was so evident. Everybody knew he loved God more than anything else. Mm -hmm. And, man, that should be said of all of us. Even if they don't like you, even if they don't like that you do love God as much, as you do. I'll tell you what, man, it'll make a statement. Mm -hmm. That person loved God. Joe loved God more than anything else. And that's really how we should be living yeah. as Christians. Yeah. Our identity should be all about him and then everything else follows suit. Yeah. You know, I, I would presume <clears throat> that for some of you taking a hard stance like that, you're already in your head thinking, okay, this is going to be interesting. Um, this is going to cause an argument or this is going to cause oh, a Oh, just do it. It'll be fun. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? And, uh, too often, uh, far too many people avoid any kind of confrontation at the expense of holiness rather than the other way around. And, and I would venture to say this. And many of you have heard this if I've, we've counseled any kind of marriage. And, and, and this happens often. You say, oh my, this is going to cause a fight. And I said, yeah, probably right now it's going to cause a fight. But there, it's the truth, and they're going to think about this, and we need to pray because eventually they'll come back around to what you said and the way you did this is the truth, and, and you're not lying, and you're you're making a stand. And I'm saying this to you, those of you. Now there's a way you can do it, okay, and there's a wrong way, you know. You foul heathen, get that out of my house, you know. Get thee behind <laughs> me, Satan. You know, I'm not saying that Please you're going to look at your family members and start talking to them that way. But I am saying that you can put your foot down nicely. You can put your foot down without stomping on their foot at the same time. And you, but you can make a stance knowing full well, okay, this is going to be a little bit uncomfortable. But I believe that they're going to come back and respect you. I believe, and, and, and you, you doing this also sets a precedent for your family. This is where we draw the line as our family right here. And um, we won't budge on this. There are certain things where we can, you know, we can be a little flexible on, but there's certain things where we won't. You do these things that we just talked about right now, and you watch. You watch what happens with your family. If you want to lead your family and not just get through the holidays here, you know, but you want to be a, a Christian and lead them through this, you take some firm stances on these issues right here that we're talking about, and you see what God does. Because God will be on your side when you do these things. He'll back you up. Amen? I want to close in prayer for those of you that are joining us, uh, Facebook or YouTube or however it is that you're watching this. We pray blessings on you. And I pray that even if you get this after Christmas, that you'll continue to use these uh, tools and begin to implement them into your life and see great change. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. You're such a good God, and we're so grateful 
uh, to you for all that you've done for us. Lord, I pray blessings on everyone here and those that are joining at home. Bless them during this Christmas season. Remind them that you love them. Remind them, Father, of the great gift that you sent in Jesus Christ. Jesus, we promise to shine uh, your love and your goodness. We're not going to allow Christmas to outshine you, Lord. You are the Father of our faith, and Father, we worship you right now, and we thank you so much that you've given your Son, Jesus. Because of that, we have freedom from sin. We're on our way to heaven. What a great gift that we have to showcase to the world around us. I pray blessings on everyone, Lord, that you just keep them safe, and uh, Lord, that you bring them back to the next service uh, recharged and ready to serve.